Today, I, you, I know you guys are all on information overload. I heard it at breakfast already. People are like, oh, I don't know how much more I can take. So what I want to do today is I want to kind of distill, if that's legal in Utah, distill what we've learned in the last two years into some very simple kind of hopefully morsels that you can take away. And of course, we're K-12, so we have fun, right? So... Um, I'm excited to see that case. Well, I'm very honored to be here. Thank uh, Instructure for letting me come up and make a fool of myself. But I'm really, I'm really excited that Instructure is uh, pushing and investing resources in K-12 because it is a, it's a fantastic tool. The simplicity of it is amazing, and it's got all the bells and whistles, but they're in the background, so it doesn't interfere with the interface, which I love about Canvas. I don't work for Instructure, by the way. I'm. I work for Granite School District. And one of our themes today is don't throw away the stuff that works, okay? When you're creating new courses, don't throw away the stuff that works. For example, my lovely suitcase <laughs> or my, my bell bottoms from the 60s. Okay. <laughs> so that's part of our theme. Just don't throw away the stuff that works. Keep that in mind, okay? I'm going to give you a very down and dirty history of what we are, but I want to go into the, hopefully, the morsels. Okay, so we started, as I said, Heather and I uh, got together. We did a pilot program in uh, 2011. We had five courses we were really excited about, and we developed our own, had 150 kids, and we had a wide variety of kids. I really went out and found kids that were, you know, smoking behind the building. I found kids that were applying for Stanford, and they were only 14. Found kids that were home hospital, et cetera. So we had a really wide sampling of kids. We chose to use uh, Canvas because I thought I looked at a bunch, and I was pretty impressed. We did use another one in our, uh, our pilot as well. Um, but what we loved about Canvas is the 21st, what I call them as 21st century tools, right? The discussion, and this is a little dated because things have changed. I think everything's changing, right? But the discussion boards, conferencing, collaboration, the ability to uh, integrate with the e-portfolio, the assignments, completion options, media notifications. Then one day, Senator Stevenson came along, and there was something called Senate Bill 65. I know you're all from different states, perhaps, but in Utah, um, kind of their, the, the state was pushing for online learning options. We haven't yet mandated online classes like some states have, although that's spoken about. Um, so we were faced with an option of, do we want to develop our own curriculum, continue down that road, or do we want to go find a turnkey solution? We opted to develop our own because that's what we were already doing. We figured we've got... Can I say darn up here? Darn good teachers in Utah. And so we used our own teachers and developed our own curriculum. Um, there was a group of us that kind of decided we had the same th ideas in mind. Initially, it was the top seven, and I'm glad to say that Weber's joining us this year. So together, these eight districts represent almost 50% of the, the kids in Utah under our umbrella. Um, we're, it's all about collaboration. We don't exchange money. It's in-kind donation. Um, and what's, what's fabulous, if I can say fabulous, is uh, Canvas allows, it doesn't matter if you're a Park City kid, you log in and you have a Jordan teacher, you're taking classes with Nebo students, right? It's amazing, it's seamless, kids have no idea. They just know they're getting a really good course from a good teacher. Um, and I'm glad to say that as of today, we have <laughs> over a thousand kids enrolled in our summer program and 30 classes. It has been a wild roller coaster. I had a full head of hair when I started this thing, um, and but it's been really exciting. So one of the things that we've used when we've uh, designed the course is understanding by design. We could do a whole day presentation on understanding by design by Wiggins. It's also called called backward design, right? The idea is you start with the big enduring understanding, the big idea. What do you want students to to know, right? You scaffold it with the essential questions. And then you figure out how you're going to assess them. You start with the end in mind, and then you put in all your little activities, right? We as teachers sometimes get so caught up in, I've got this great activity, and it's like, no. I almost started, stop, don't. There's a little Utah song, but I'm not going to go there either today. Um, 
Uh, so understanding by design, look it up if you're not familiar with it. It's a great way. It works really well in a classroom. It works really well online. I mean, and you scaffold it, and it's not a secret. Share it with your students. What are you learning? This is what you're going to learn, and this is why, and this is how. It really, really helps to develop a course. Okay, when today's strategy, today we're talking about engagement. It is June, we're at Canyons, but that's not the kind of engagement we're talking about. Nor is it this kind. Although, if you want to have a lively discussion board, this is a great topic, right? I just want to say that we, we front load all of our... Um, Would you believe the Dean just... One of the things we've done, I think, very well is front loading. All of our courses start with a really dynamic uh, module on civility and netiquette. And kids have to do that first. They really, they really deep, 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 you know, delve deeply into this idea of what it means to be uh, an online citizen and how to behave. And I'm very happy to say in the 2,000, 2,200 kids we've had, we've only had one instance of someone being inappropriate. And it was something about be sure to eat a pickle today because it could be your last day. Kind of weird, kind of cryptic, but it was deemed a threat by Davis County. You know, they do things differently up there. You know, they pull books off shelves and things like that. Um, but the pickle threat was taken seriously and there was consequences. But that's the only thing. And I really credit this beginning module, the netiquette and really front loading. Okay, so a little, I want to see if you're listening. I want you to find some, before we come up with examples, I want some non-examples. So I want you to see if you can hear some non-examples of what you think online teaching strategies or engaging strategies. You had my cookies due to my substandard online course evaluations. I'm going to need you to improve my course. Hello, professor. I have reviewed your evaluations. It appears that your students had hoped for a bit more communication with you. But I recorded 50 hours of lectures. Everything is explained in perfect detail. I checked in with them at least every two weeks and everything was rainbows and unicorns. Perhaps I should add more lectures. According to your evaluations, there appears to be a consensus that emails went unanswered and you were essentially missing in action for the majority of the semester. Indeed. I was across the pond for several weeks. My teaching assistant Oliver was put in charge of the course. Apparently the budding rocket scientists build a mocha choco latte on my computer, so he was unable to access the internet for quite some time. That is unfortunate. Perhaps he could have used another computer, or you could have logged in while traveling. But the course is on my office computer. Please don't try to confuse me. Ta. Okay, so give me an example, a non-example. Who's got a non-example from this? Prizes, prizes. Yeah, can you specific one? Yeah. 50 hours of lectures online. Yes, not the best solution. Our first uh, rendition of our, one of our science classes, there was a lesson with 50 PowerPoint slides. I was like, oh, I, I really, I always try to find something positive. I really like the colors, I told the <laughs> developer. What else? Not an example. Never... Yeah, I get back to them every two weeks. I mean, yeah, that does not work for online classes. Any, another non-example. TA in charge of your class, yes. Blatant promotion, Granite Connect, water bottle, sorry. Oops, sorry. One other non-example. It's on my office computer, yeah. Okay, one more. Okay, I've got one. Another example, non-example. Non yeah. And this, again, is a good strategy with students in the classroom, and it works online too. You come up with non-examples as well as examples, right? And then they get it. And we're not going to watch that whole thing because that just... You'll see some pink hair here soon. Okay, so now for audience participation, I need my helpers. Okay, so just one at a time when, you're, when your word is called. So this is, again, just a silly strategy. You gotta, I've been out of the classroom for a while, a little rusty, so forgive me. But I'm also from youth in custody, so we do things. We're a little different. We're a little different. All right. So these are the morsels I want you to take away. I've kind of distilled it down to three C's and three R's that I think work for, to keep in mind when you're developing and teaching. Okay. So the first one is curriculum. Where is my curriculum? All right. Come on down. Let's see a little runway. We're K-12. We're a little odd. Yeah. All right. Curriculum. 
that's yeah, it works for you. It totally works for you. So what do we mean by curriculum? You got to start with good curriculum, right? And like in Granite, we have district maps. The state has a core and Canvas. Soon, 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 we'll have the state standards, so you can link them to your to your your courses. And that's super exciting. So curriculum, you have to start with a good foundation. Connection. <laughs> All right, let's do a little runway, please, so I can see your word. Can you, can you do a little runway for us so that you know, they feel like the people in the back? Yeah, if you could, yeah, thank you. It's like boxing ring, boxing ring. Yeah. Girl, uh, yeah. Connection. Connection. Our product is Granite Connect. We're an affiliate of Utah Students Connect. This idea that students have to connect with each other, with the content, right? And Canvas has this great tool, collaboration. It's not used a lot because I think it's, oh, it's a little hard to do, right? But like there's an example from a civics class. There's this wonderful, wonderful website called Landmark Supreme Court Decisions. And it has 25 Supreme Court decisions. You put your students in groups of three. The first person does the background of the case. The second person does the actual court case itself. And the third person talks about the legacy of the case, right? And they present to, their, to the class. You come up with 10 cases, and kids are A, going to understand how the Supreme Court works and our court system works, and B, the idea of legacy, just because Plessy versus Ferguson was in the 1890s does not mean that there's not a, a lingering legacy, right? Um, so this collaboration, do not be afraid to use it. It's your friend. Choice. All right, representing Granite District, choice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kids love to have choice, right? In, in Canvas, you have submission settings. You know, most of the time, file upload, file upload. Don't be afraid of some of those other ones, you know? Some of our most amazing, um, we're all teachers, right? We're all literacy teachers. We teach reading and writing. All of our courses have lots of rich literacy content, right? But don't be afraid. Our kids are using all these tools for their social media at home, etc. Let's meld those things together. Driver's Ed, yes, we teach Driver's Ed online. I'll tell you about that later. It sounds odd. Um, but it works really well, and it's a very popular class. One of the assignments, organ donation. Um, I'm, it's, I'm not to be serious for, for a moment. There's a huge need for organs, right? Especially healthy organs. And unfortunately, young people, it's a huge, that's a huge uh, demographic, let's say, a source, right? So, so part of the core is letting kids think about, do you want to check that box? Do you want to become an organ donor? If, God us forbid, that something should happen to you, right? Um, so this one girl, it was, we're using the common, oh, I can't say that common, the new Utah core, because common core sounds something else like communism. So we don't say that anymore. The new Utah core, uh, which 42 other states are also doing. Uh, but so this girl, this young woman, she chooses to do, this argumentation about why kids should choose that. She does an Animoto presentation. Yes, she uses a Saab, uh, what's her name? The uh, Lilith, Lilith Fair. Sarah McLaughlin song, yeah. And she goes through with her family and her adopted brother who, who was a fetal alcohol kid and needed a new heart. And her story, and by the end, it was like, I think Heather saw it. Did you see it one? We were all like, okay, we need five, all right? Do you think that young woman got the, the assignment? Do you think she used the, the skills in the new Utah Corps? Absolutely, right? She could have written an essay, but wow, I, I still get a little choked up just thinking about that and how effective it was because we gave her a choice in how to show mastery of that assignment. And Canvas lets you do that. Again, I'm not a salesperson for Canvas, but this is how we're using it. Rigor. Rah. All right. <laughs> uh, 
it's a vocabulary strategy. It's not necessarily tried and true, but we're, we're trying. It's just we'll see what you think by the end. Okay, rigor. A lot of our kids, I'd say 80% or more, some of the kids are, are in our program because that's the only choice they have based on choices they've made. Other kids are in the program because they're bored. They're bored to death, right? And they want rigor. They want someone to challenge them, right? They eat it up. I have this one young lady, I'm teaching one of our classes, and she was like, after the civic dialogue thing, and, I, and the, the civility piece is actually from Indiana University. And I said, I know some of you are ninth graders. This is a really hard piece to get through, but I want you to really take time and digest it. And she was just like, I think this is going to be fun, <laughs> you know, because she could tell this was going to be a rigorous class, and kids rise to the challenge. So keep that in mind. Our first R, rigor. Our second R, relevance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the, it has to keep that in mind. It has to be relevant as you're designing these courses, right? It has to be relevant to the student's life, and it has to be relevant to the world they live in, right? So, for example, in Canvas, you have these discussion boards. They are the sky's the limit on discussion boards, right? In our, another government class example, um, Florida was uh, debating whether. Uh, they were going to institute random drug testing of all state employees, so for the entire length of your career. Do you think kids might have an interest in that or have an opinion about that? You better believe it, right? And it has relevance in their life. Uh, drug use and abuse and et cetera are part of, part of our society and part of our culture, right? So if you make it relevant, you tie it to the core, you tie it to your curriculum, and to their their life and the world around them. You, and then you have to sometimes, okay, you have to stop, stop submissions because I can't grade anymore. Okay, 10 is enough, you know? Other times you're trying, okay, you have to give us three, you know? If you make it relevant, they will go and go and go and go and go. And then you know you're, you're onto something. And our next R, oh, wait a minute. That was our third R. Do we have everyone up here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, this, that's, that's right, relevance. Sorry, this is a part of relevance too. Uh, Juneteenth, who knows what Juneteenth is? Yeah, we don't really celebrate it in Utah. In Ogden, we do. Ogden, can, emancipation, right? The end of slavery. Galveston, Texas is one of the last places in the northern, uh, the North American continent to know that slavery had ended. So we celebrate that day, and it's called Juneteenth, and it's the end of slavery as we know it. And it's, it stems from a small event in a small place in Texas, but it's grown to be this amazing celebration. It's mostly celebrated in the African-American community, but I really think as Americans, we really need to celebrate that. Make it relevant to your students. And they even have a Juneteenth flag. You know, it's uh, not something a lot of people know about, but my students know about it. Uh, discussion boards, okay, we did that. And their last R, am I going, I'm going backwards. I'm like, wait a minute, sorry. It's been a long couple of weeks. <laughs> and you're getting dizzy. I know, I'm not a Prezi expert, as you can tell. I just put it all out there like, uh, what's the art? I said, yeah. Relationships, come on down. Okay, this is my favorite. This reminds me of an 80s video. I love this wig. It's one of my favorite. Relationships. Your, your best classroom teachers are not always going to be your best online teachers, okay? It's more challenging to foster relationships online, but when you do, it's amazing. It's amazing. All my teachers have told me, I know my students, uh, my online students, better than I ever knew my classroom, my classroom students, and they've never physically met them, you know? I'm teaching a course, and I'm getting messages three times a day from some of my students because I'll reply, they'll respond back, um, and some of it is, is mostly about content, but I'm always, I'm kind of goofy, and I always relate it to something out in the world or something I'm doing. You know, I'll be uh, traveling this, this summer in Europe for my, this is my summer job, and you better believe I'm going to share what I'm doing. It's financial literacy. I'll find a way to make it work. I mean, I don't know anything about Europe and financial literacy that could be relevant right now, do you? 
and my summer job, I work for Elder Hostel International. This is from a trip to Northeast Greenland. You know, I love my job. I love both my jobs, actually. But, uh, and I'm really excited with the technology and with Canvas now. I could kind of blog about what I'm doing this summer. And again, try to personalize it, but connect it to the content and, and make it relevant. Um, so again, just to review our, our, uh, our three Cs, if you could say them after me. Who was our first one? Curriculum. One more time. Curriculum. All right. And connection. connection. One more time. Connection. From granite. Choice. Choice. Okay. The first R for rigor. 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 <laughs> right. Relevance. 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 And from the 80s. Really? Okay, that is super simplistic, I know, but as you're designing these courses, and, and not just designing, but um, uh, of de uh, and analyzing them, right? Every quarter we have uh, curriculum review sessions. We look at these things, say, okay, where are we lacking? If we are scoring ourselves, are we hitting all of these things? And it's not a perfect model, but it's just a really simple way that I found, we found, that kind of works for kind of our online classes. Thank you for, um, let's give a hand to our boxing ring girls and guys. And those wigs are on loan, I'm sorry, so make sure I get them back. Only one is mine, I, can't, I won't tell you which one. <laughs> All right, and we have like, I'm good, we have like five minutes, so we have questions. I'm excited to go through that early. Thank you so much. Yes, Victoria. Do I need to repeat what Victoria said? Was everyone able to hear? Okay, or, or for recording, just uh, Victoria's asking about the rigor. How do you, how do you put that front and center? Um, for us, our counselors, half of my job has been training counselors. At first, we got, were flooded with kids like online, great, that's going to be easy, you know. And and they, there are some places where you can do. A, I'm not going to mention any names. There are some schools in Utah where you can do a quarter credit in like a day, like. Uh, I, have, I have my doubts about that. Um, but we ha we're, we've gotten much better at vetting students and putting up front, okay, they have to take a little survey. They sit down with the counselors and say, okay, here is a learning option. It's rigorous. You, you have to do assignments. You have to be self-disciplined, et cetera. And we give them an out. We give them actually until midterm to drop without consequence, especially kids that are taking it for the first time. So they kind of self-select out. They try it because they think it's going to be easy. But then we we give them the self-select, opt-out option. What I'm really excited about was what Brian was talking about yesterday, this idea of 
we can easily, a repository, so we can put these, these classes, and I'm not saying all of our classes have equal rigor. <laughs> no, the one with the 50 PowerPoint slides that I talked about, oof, you know. Um, but the idea, if we can start finding those classes and collaborating, we were talking with Logan the other day, let's share our best, best classes, you know, and then you have your teachers, we have our teachers, that's a different, a paradox, the different ideas about the teaching and selection of teachers. But if you start with that rigorous course material, I'm really excited about what we can do. Well, I, I guess my question is similar to that. Like you say, the 50 slide PowerPoint, I think a lot of people mistake volume for rigor. How do you really build rigor in the content without being it voluminous to where it does take you know, twice as long as a face to face class? Especially on a really complex topic like anatomy. What yeah. have you guys learned about that? What we've learned about rigor, especially like in the sciences, we're going to try. Right now, it's hard for us because we have kids in Nebo, which is somewhere down in Utah County. Sorry, I know where it is. And then we have kids in Tooele, which is basically Nevada. Um, so we can't really require them to come to a central location for a lab, but that would be ideal. Like the blended learning, you know, there's the backtrack. There's no study that's shown that online learning is best for, for kids. Exclusive online learning does not work for the majority of kids. So we're talking about a small segment of the population. But what would, would enhance that or, or uh, increase that population would be a blended learning model if we could have a central location where for labs or for, we, te we do PE online as well. That's another story. But you know, to have a central location where they can come and, and, and do it, and actually it works really well because we've had kids um, in their evaluations. This is the first time some, especially young women, felt comfortable in with exercising and found something they enjoy and they don't have to deal with 60 sweaty kids in the gym and the locker rooms and the bullying and all the, the stuff that can be part of a gym experience. So yeah, definitely a challenge. There's another. I think um, our best online teachers have been those teachers that are able to think out of the box. Um, and, and that's a very general thing. Um, teachers that have had background in online learning is very helpful. And pretty much anyone that's coming out of any school in the last 10 years is going to have that experience. Anyone that's doing continuing ed, which is pretty much all teachers, right, are going to have experience in online um, education. But for us, it's been trial and error. We thought we had some really ace teachers. And wow, those aces were, <laughs> they were not aces in online. And some of them like opted out. They said, wow, this is not for me, just like the students. So a lot of it is trial and error. But uh, we do do professional development quite a bit. And we're doing a lot of it in Canvas now because of our geographic challenges. Do we have time for one more question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, we, the introduction, the introductory module, we can share it. And what we do is just, it's civility, netiquette, and then basic Canvas, like Canvas 101 and resources. But it saved me a lot of grief. And like I said, it's, it's worked really well. We've only had the, the pickle incident. So I could, how would I share that? If you go to graniteconnect.org and just, um, just say contact us, it'll, it's us is really a department of one. But I like to call it us, right? We're growing. Um, I'll get the email directly, and then I'll figure out a way. Yeah, that's what I'm really excited about that repository you spoke about yesterday because that would be super exciting. Just go right there. I mean, I, I guess I could make the course and publicly share it. I just have to, I haven't done that yet. Okay. I can, yes, I could do that. All right, thank you for your attendance. I hope it wasn't, I hope you walked away with something.